Hey everyone. So there are basically two different kinds of sentence constructions that you'll be practicing this term. And uh, the first kind is that you keep both sentences that you're going to join together sentences. And for whatever reason, you all can do this genre of sentence construction fairly easily. We're going to be doing some other ones where one of these sentences actually no longer becomes a sentence. It's called a subordinating clause. And those are a little bit more challenging for you for whatever reason. Um, so those you're going to want to practice more. Um, and this one, fanboys, is the first kind where this is a sentence and this is a sentence. That's kind of what you have to remember. So I have that illustrated right here. So here's your first sentence. And then you give me one of the fanboys, and then you give me the second sentence. And I have an example here. Parking was horrible the first day of the term, yet luckily I took the shuttle. So this is perfect. And um, you all, most of you do these already, and I just want to make sure that we kind of review this or that maybe there's some of them you don't do as often or as well as the others. So here's the list of fanboys. You all know this, or you will soon, for and nor but or yet, like the one up here, and so. These are the only fanboys that there are. And actually, they're not all equal. Um, I don't want you to think of them all in the same way, in that um, some of them you actually will never use. It's, they're just so rare that you should just probably forget about them. And um, I would say that nor is one that you'll never use. And one that you'll probably also never use is or. Or is a little tiny bit more common than or, but basically I don't see those in your papers ever. So those are the ones that you'll never use, so you kind of just need to know that they're there, but that you won't use them. And then they're the ones that you overuse. Those are something to also sort of keep in mind. So and, you guys all use and as a fanboy probably too much. And then the second one, can you guess, is but. And you use quite a few buts in your paper as well. And what I'm interested in you doing is using the ones that are used by everyone else who is a pretty good writer, um, but that you may not use them. And that's basically for and yet. So go ahead and use and. Go ahead and use but. Do know that yet is virtually the same as but, and so oftentimes when you want to use but, you can just substitute yet in there. And this one is underutilized by most of you for, and it's a great one to use, and it's the one I like you to practice the most. And some people are going to have, you know, it's going to be hard for you. Um, but it's what we're going to talk about. So um, what's difficult is the relationship between these two sentences. That's the thing that you kind of struggle with. And here's, we have a good example of a properly used fanboy for. I dozed off during class today for I worked a double shift last night until late. So. Can you, now that you have an example in front of you, can you see what the relationship is between these two? Think of, think of it as causal. So, and what's hard is that the thing that causes it comes after. So that, I think, is what confuses some of you. So I worked a double shift last night, and that is why the thing at the beginning of the sentence happens. So it's a causal relationship. You state the thing that happened, and then you talk about the cause after. 
Okay, so I want everyone to try this at least once just to get the hang of it. I'll probably have you try it in class or in a discussion strand or on the quiz. It's going to pop up again, I guarantee you. So, what else do I need to tell you about this? One of the things that you probably noticed is this comma right here before the fanboy. And this is something you're just going to have to memorize. When I ask students, like, when do you use commas, people say things like, oh, it's when you want to make a pause, or it's, it's a lot of the time there are very, very specific rules, and you need to kind of learn those rules um, and get them down in your brain so you don't have to worry about them. And one of the rules is when you're connecting two sentences and you want to use a fanboy, then put the comma before the fanboy, not after. Don't forget it, just before. And I can get 80 to 90% of you to remember that. So, comma before the fanboy. Now, the other thing I want you to know is how often should you use this construction? I'm thinking maximum once a paragraph. Don't overuse it. It'll look like that's the only thing you know how to do. So you can use in a paragraph, maybe do a yet or a for or an and. But then once you've done it, I want you to practice some other sentence constructions. Okay, so don't overuse it. The comma now. The last thing I want to tell you, and we'll, we'll go over this in another unit, is Sometimes when I ask people to use for as a fanboy, and I say, okay, give me a sentence with for as a fanboy, what you do, or what some people do, is they know this word as a preposition. They don't know it's called a preposition. They just know in their head how to use it. And so when I ask for a sentence with this as a fanboy, you give me something like uh, for... Pete's sake, which is an expression that most of you probably know. This isn't a fanboy, and the reason you know it's not a fanboy is if you cover up the fanboy, there needs to be a sentence on both sides. And if I say Pete's sake, most of you are going to know that's not a sentence. So in this case, because it's not a sentence, you know it's being used as a preposition. So it's the only one, you know, the rest of them aren't used as prepositions. It's only this one. So make sure that, and I have a whole different talk on prepositions if you're a little bit fuzzy on what prepositions are. And we're going to get to that in the class. So you can just watch that video. Okay, last thing. Sometimes I ask you to list all the fanboys, and someone's going to list because. They're just going to not remember, and they're going to write because down. When they see the B, they're not going to think but. They're going to write because. And the reason you know that's not a fanboy is because it's too long. All the fanboys, two or three letters, maximum. None of them are longer than that. Because it's a long word relative to the others. So always tell yourself, I, if it's a fanboy, it's two or three letters, and that will help you remember. Okay? Good luck. Use it once per paragraph maximum, and study this for the quiz.